when you think of Europe today, you probably picture a patchwork of different countries, cultures, languages, and people. But where did they actually come from? The truth is, Europe's story isn't just about kings, empires, and wars. It starts tens of thousands of years ago, with migrations, survival during the Ice Age, and massive cultural shifts that shape the DNA of modern Europeans. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the ancient ancestry of Europe. From the first modern humans leaving Africa, to hunter-gatherers surviving the Ice Age, to the rise of farming and powerful migrations that followed, by the end you'll understand how three ancient groups built the genetic foundations of Europe, and how their movements still echo in the bloodlines and languages we see today. Modern humans, our ancestors, left Africa anywhere between 45 to 100,000 years ago. Now the time frame of when we left Africa is quite controversial, as there are many different theories regarding our expansion, with archaeological evidence backing many of these claims. There is a lot of evidence to show that Homo sapiens left Africa in waves up to as far back as 130,000 years ago. But all modern humans are believed to be descendants of one migration most likely 50,000 years ago. The earlier Homo sapiens that left Africa most likely died out and didn't mix with later Homo sapien populations who were our ancestors. The reason I say 50,000 years ago sounds closer to our initial migration is because we have a Neanderthal genetic component that is found in all non-African Homo sapiens. And this mixing is now being dated around 47,000 years ago. This Neanderthal mixing must have happened in West Eurasia, most likely in the Middle East, as humans were contacting Neanderthals. It is very likely that we mixed with Neanderthals in this region 40 to 50,000 years ago and expanded out from there. There is also evidence of something called the Arabian Standstill, which suggests that Homo sapiens actually left Africa around 80,000 years ago and stayed in the Middle East for as long as 30,000 years, adapting to the region before spreading out around 50,000 years ago. When we talk about the first modern humans in Europe, we're talking about a group called the European Early Modern Human, or as they used to be called, Cro-Magnons. They were anatomically modern humans that were descendants of our first migrations out of Africa, who started arriving in Europe somewhere between 45 and 55,000 years ago, around the time of the Upper Paleolithic. When these early humans got to Europe, it wasn't empty. Neanderthals were already living there and the two species came in contact. They also interbred. Cro-Magnons didn't just coexist with Neanderthals, over time they became the dominant human population in Europe and over the course of thousands of years, they developed lighter skin and straighter hair. These people were a very interesting population, and if you want me to, I can make another video going in depth on their existence in Europe, but they didn't have a large impact on modern European DNA. Around 14,000 years ago, around the end of the Pleistocene, as the climate started warming up, a new group began spreading across Europe, the Western Hunter-Gatherer, or WHG. These people seem to have originated in southeastern Europe or western Asia, with evidence of western hunter-gatherers going as far back as 17 to 19,000 years ago in Italy. As the glaciers retreated, they moved further into the continent, and by 10,000 years ago, they had replaced most of the older, you know, European early modern human people. Though, just like Neanderthals, there was some mixing going on too, and I think especially in Western Europe, you can see a mix of these Cro-Magnon, quote-unquote Cro-Magnon people and the Western hunter-gatherers. Now, Western hunter-gatherers had dark skin and could also produce blue eyes, with a notable example being Cheddar Man, who existed in the UK around 10,000 years ago. At the same time, in Eastern Europe, there was another group called the Eastern Hunter-Gatherers, or EHG. These guys were different. Most of their ancestry came from ancient North Eurasians, a group that originally came from Siberia. The Eastern hunter-gatherers weren't completely isolated though, because around 30% of their DNA came from the Western hunter-gatherers, which means there was already quite a bit of contact going on between these ancient groups. There was also other groups like Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, who were a mix of Western hunter-gatherers and Eastern hunter-gatherers. Europe during the early Holocene was going through a huge transformation. 
The continent was almost completely repopulated during this time as different hunter-gatherer groups spread and mixed, shaping the genetic landscape of Europe long before the rise of farming or complex civilizations. The agricultural revolution marked the beginning of farming and subsequently villages and a more sedentary lifestyle. Historically, what we have seen is that once one group starts farming, they spread to different areas, migrate, and many times take over land of hunter-gatherer tribes, mixing with them and bringing farming along. And this was no different in Europe. Agriculture was developed in the Middle East around 11,700 years ago, marking the end of the Pleistocene. One of the most important groups regarding farming was the Anatolian Neolithic farmers. This group is one of the largest genetic components in the Mediterranean. Their DNA is found in highest rates in populations all over the Middle East, Southern Europe, and North Africa. Anatolian Neolithic farmers were mostly themselves derived from Anatolian hunter-gatherers, with a small portion of their DNA coming from other peoples in the Middle East, like Iranian, Caucasian, and Nutufian hunter-gatherers. Around 9,000 years ago, these Anatolian Neolithic farmers started migrating west into Europe, entering through the Balkans and spreading throughout Europe, over time mixing slightly with the western hunter-gatherer population. This new mixed population, even though most of their DNA came from Anatolian Neolithic farmers, became what we refer to as the Early European Farmers, or EEF. The introduction of the Anatolian Neolithic farmers brought light skin back into Europe and eventually replaced the western hunter-gatherers. Over the next few thousand years, the EEF became a dominant population in Europe and villages became widespread throughout the continent with the introduction of farming. But the next population to enter Europe didn't just have a genetic impact, but a long-lasting cultural and linguistic one. Around 7,000 years ago, EHG or Eastern hunter-gatherers in the Pontic Caspian steppe mixed with Caucasus hunter-gatherers. Caucasus hunter-gatherers are believed to be the first population to develop blue eyes as far back as 42,000 years ago. These two groups mixed and their descendant population is called the Western Steppe Herders, a group that birthed the Yamnaya culture, the Indo-Europeans, who are one of the most important groups in our world's history as they spoke Proto-Indo-European, which spread throughout Europe, the Middle East, and South Asia, being the ancestor of all Indo-European languages, languages that include English, Spanish, Russian, Hindi, Farsi, Kurdish. Around 42% of the world's population speaks an Indo-European language as their first language. That's over 3 billion people. Western steppe herders, facing changes in climate and resource scarcity, left their lands and spread throughout Europe around 5,000 years ago, reaching all the way to Britain around 4,400 years ago. The reason they could expand so successfully had a lot to do with the fact that they domesticated the horse and were pastoralists, so they had plenty of people and also plenty of horses. Like the ANF, they also had lighter skin and after spreading throughout Europe, the dark skin trait unfortunately disappeared with the disappearance of the western hunter-gatherers. These western steppe herders or WSH also brought with them their religious beliefs and these mixed with the native beliefs developing ancient gods of Europe from Germanic paganism, Greek and Roman mythology, ancient Celtic religion, all the way to Hinduism and Zoroastrianism. Now, these three ancient populations are the ancestral components of most Europeans. Yes, some groups may have later admixture from different regions that carry different ancient populations, like Southern Italians or Sicilians having some Middle Eastern related DNA, or also people from certain regions will have most of their DNA from other sources, like a Georgian, for example, will have most of their DNA coming from Caucasus hunter-gatherers. But for the most part, most European DNA is from Western hunter-gatherers, Anatolian Neolithic farmers, and Western steppe herders. And the breakdown varies by region. It seems that Southern Europeans, countries that touch the Mediterranean, have lower rates of Western hunter-gatherer DNA than Central or Northern European countries at 15% or lower on average. Baltic nations tend to have the highest rates of Western hunter-gatherer DNA at around 25-35%. to Eastern Europeans, Northern Europeans, and Britishers in general have slightly higher Western hunter-gatherer DNA than Western Europeans. 
reaching up to 25% as Western Europeans usually have 20% or less. Western steppe herder DNA is higher in Northern Europeans than in Southern Europeans, with just above 50% of their ancestry with Eastern Europeans having similar Western steppe herder DNA at around 40 to 50%. The more south you go, the lower this ancestral component gets. This trend is the opposite when it comes to Anatolian Neolithic farmer DNA, as Southern Europeans tend to get about 50% of their DNA from ANF on average and many Italians will have closer to 60%, same with southern Balkans like Greeks and Albanians. Sardinians have the highest rate of ANF DNA in the world with around 80%. So to wrap everything up, the story of Europe's people is basically the story of movement, mixing and adaptation over tens of thousands of years, from the first modern humans leaving Africa and meeting Neanderthals, to the spread of western and eastern hunter-gatherers, to the massive changes brought by farming with the Anatolian Neolithic farmers, and finally the huge cultural and genetic impact of the western steppe herders, every major wave left its mark. Today when you look at the DNA of Europeans, it's like reading a history book written by these ancient populations. And while there are regional differences and later migrations that shaped specific areas, the foundation was built by these ancient people. It's crazy to think that the languages we speak, the religions that formed, and even a lot of the physical traits we see today all trace back to massive prehistoric migrations all over the world. Human history is way deeper and more complex than most people realize.